examples from video art or for free. And, and the distributors have to earn. And I also want to invite the filmmakers to take part of the, uh, be part of the discussion. Uh, I have been having, um, you were talking about the archive models and the contextualization. I was thinking that our catalog, um, the short film sales catalog that we have, it's really, really great and really extraordinary and to curate and play with it uh, and to actually let people know that it exists, which is kind of one side. That's basically, I mean, that's the continuum we're talking about, um, that uh, our the content that we have is at the same time um, the value that we have ourselves uh, so people um, actually uh, find out about the Hamburg Shopping Agency. So to actually open it up on the net would be that and uh, then you don't have the, but, and that would be fun. I would love to do it. At the same time, um, it wouldn't bring any money in the first place. So basically that's, that's the one thing to have that, I mean that's basically summing up the discussion. To have the marketing aspect, um, where we basically have everything in place, uh, quality-wise, but to not have the um, revenue model for that kind of uh, for that kind of opening up, and also the other thing that uh, has to be explicitly said is that there is a problem um, to uh, generate to to a revenue. There's a, a revenue problem for short films because you can um, when you pay. Just to um, people are willing to pay four euro or thirteen euro to um, stream or download a feature film, and they are willing um, to get out their credit card, and then you have a decent uh, share. For short films, um, if you get your credit card for ninety nine cents, you really, really have to want the film, and um, and then it's kind of uh, falling down to a few few cents and uh, so it's basically it's a different uh, that that was also the question that we raised in Graz so that was raised when are you at what point are you getting out your credit card um, and uh, is uh, what other models are there to actually get some revenue for shots and the experience that we have is that the subscription model works best if you know no I think everything is possible now. We, we have a new form to explore, we have new forms of exploitation of films. Uh, we have, everything is to be invented still. I mean, uh, there is no an initiative in the United States that makes it you can buy a DVD, you get a code, and you can then use this code from what, wherever you are and see again this film. So you can have it in your own library at home. Uh, with a beautiful picture, with a beautiful catalog uh, around the film and its history and uh, editorialization, and also use a code uh, and watch this film wherever, wherever you are. Just to explain that so many models are possible. SVOD on short films, uh, is, or on whatever, on long feature films, is, is catastrophic now. I mean, you, have, uh, you will pay for 10 euros for have an access for one more than 200 films, well, at the end, if you watch this 100 films, the right holder will, will get, I mean, 10 cents minus the 50% maybe that he will get back to the operator. So you get 5 cents for your film that's been watched by somebody uh, that, could pirate, pirate, that could have pirate, pirate, pirated it uh, because there is no DRM security and those stuff. So, it's, it's a dangerous model. Maybe a way, and I don't think I necessarily have a solution. I'm, I'm not, uh, I don't know what will be the market in five years, in 10 years, in 15 years. Uh, but maybe uh, to make bundles like we try to make it. Uh, and, and it's what uh, Argos, uh, I think, or Leuven Short in northern Belgium are doing with uh, another, an, an ISP uh, they propose. Um, a bundle of 10 short films for a, a price uh, like s maybe 6, 7 euro and you will be, you will be able to watch 10 short films, um, well, high quality short films. But um, now there is, uh, there is many ways. I think, um, well, for example, the, the movie uh, platform is really interesting. It's a really big, 
international community uh, that works for short films. I mean, when you have uh, rights for short films, generally you have those rights worldwide, and uh, I hope so exclusively. Uh, so if it's interesting to, to put this film to movie and being watched uh, worldwide, but after all, you you have no value anymore on the sales that you could make um, exclusively for one or another country after. So it's it's a model that also could be dangerous. Uh, so I, I have no solution, but uh, I think the, um, the discussion is open to, to think about it. I mean, there is many other models I don't know. So. Okay, non-exclusivity is quite important. Really, it's thing because an entity the film making. I suppose the view, our view of uh, sales and distribution is uh, the people that are best at curating uh, films. Like so, for a collection of films, this is like what audiences want is to be guided. Uh, in certain areas, and then, uh, like with what we are doing, is it's a matter of uh, connecting with them in a space online where they are prepared to pay for something because it's valuable uh, to them. And not the AVOD model where there's tons of films, adverts everywhere, and just totally devalues everything. It's saying everything's pretty mediocre. And, you know, uh, I think it's our view at least is it's important to start moving away from. Uh, make it cheap enough for people to buy. If you make it really cheap, maybe enough people will buy it, it's just not going to work. Uh, and uh, respect the audience as much as possible by offering them a uh, high quality uh, and uh, a proper relationship with them where you talk to them. Uh, we've got one film where we discovered um, there's 45,000 deaf Mexicans want to watch this film, oddly, because they told us, <laughs> right? Uh, and we discovered this because they wanted uh, closed captions in uh, Spanish and they were tweeting it to us and within what our the digital player we were able to respond to that uh, told the filmmaker they got the closed captions done for about a thousand dollars and next week it's going online and we know it's 45,000 people there that are going to buy the film. Yeah. Is this why you just got pesos? Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's it. So, like, so that's, you know, that's what we're doing is like we're uh, responding to uh, uh, what people want, you know, and, and I think if the audience know that, we can uh, film make communicate uh, that to them, you know, I think like people will pay more money in the future than people will be pre prepared to pay, you know, for super high definition, you know, 30 uh, euros or whatever, because they really know you've done the best for them with the money of that film. I just want to make a point about Bundle, bundling films from a uh, filmmaker's point of view. And whilst the short films were used to programs with five or six or DVDs were a the common theme, filmmakers don't like their films to be bundled because it takes away, uh, not an exclusivity, but it puts you in a pack. So when it's sold as a bundle on a DVD, I think a filmmaker would be like, okay, fine, someone's, but I don't know, there's just something about Oh, you're in that bundle, yeah. that's the only way we can sell your film. It's kind of how it sometimes comes to mind. Should we I have two, two answers, uh, three answers to this. I mean, uh, there is one point is that the, the bundling uh, of films is, is not, well, it's a uh, thing, thing. And for in, in, in for University of Belgium, I decided to create an editorial committee. So, well, it's a bit. Uh, um, but uh, I preferred to get my uh, shareholders and uh, right holders um, uh, matching with my point of view on what we could make uh, or not. So um, associating films together, bundling them, uh, it's, uh, it's, well, it's around uh, a year, uh, of, for example, six directors from a film school uh, from, that ended their their course the same year, uh, direct all of them a short film that, uh, uh, or, um, and, and, and that has some thematic, uh, linked thematic, or, uh, well, I think it has to be uh, associated by some way, thematically, or, uh, or because of the uh, origin of the directors, or because of uh, uh, the dispositive of the filming uh, they used. That's one point. Second, non-exclusivity uh, and exclusivity. 
uh, or I, I just uh, were speaking uh, yesterday with um, the representative of the public television in Belgium that asked now after one year negotiation with the producers, independent producers, to have in the contracts uh, on production, uh, co-production they make, uh, non-exclusive rights on VOD. They asked first worldwide non-exclusive rights on VOD. It's catastrophic. I mean, it's uh, devaluating all the uh, uh, VOD rights. If I go to an ISP and that uh, I ask a 65 percent on the exploitation of it, or if I ask a minimum guarantee of, let's say, uh, I don't know, 3,000, 5,000 euro, they will never give me if this public television or any other other uh, initiative. Um, can go with it to them and propose them a 63% and 3,000 euro MG. So, uh, who is the winner in this? The players, the main players, the leaders of the market, the telecoms, uh, the ISPs, uh, iTunes, and whatever. So, our goal was to, well, and that's the third answer I want to say, we don't export all of the films. We don't make a big package uh, with thousands of films with really bad quality and really highly qualitative films. We try to follow a line of, of um, qualitative film. And sometimes I have to tell some partners, well, sorry, but we can't put this with, it doesn't match fit with our offer. What I can do is maybe to try to distribute it to some other platform or to uh, an ISP if it takes it. We'll take any film. <laughs> okay, I'm done. <laughs>